Hey friends, my name's Stuart, and I am so excited you're here today because we are taking a closer look at two things that can help us learn more about God, science and faith. This is important because sometimes the messages we get about both seem confusing. Some people think that if we really love and believe in God, that means that we shouldn't care as much about science or that if we wanna learn and know more about science, that means we really don't believe in what the authors in the Bible have documented. But it turns out that's not the case at all. Science and faith don't actually need to be separated. In fact, we can learn a lot about one by taking a closer look at the other. Like, I remember when I was studying science, it was middle school science and we were learning about reptiles and some of the names of reptiles, actually specifically about lizards, which lizards are crazy. I remember the first time that I discovered that we were taught that if you step on a lizard's tail and then if it runs away because that allows them to get away from predators, their tail will grow back. But that's not even what I wanna talk about. What I wanna talk about is chameleons. Yeah, how crazy is that? God literally created a lizard, a reptile, that skin has different layers to change colors, to be camouflaged, to be able to get close to whatever it wants to eat. I mean, how cool is that? We have the most creative God in the world. You see, when we look at science as something that can actually grow our faith, we wind up learning and experiencing more of who God is and how God works. But the problem is, some people don't look at science and faith this way. There are people who think the two should be separated. Some people think that learning about science might lead you to believe there isn't a God at all. They tell you that because science can't prove that God exists, it means that God doesn't exist. Or some might argue that because scientific facts can change and what God says never changes, it must mean science isn't trustworthy. Of course, other people think in order to fully believe in God, you have to give up on science because if science seeks to explain things and some things about faith just can't be explained, maybe learning more about science could be dangerous to your faith. Maybe some of you have asked similar questions or had the same thoughts about science and faith. I know I've wondered all this before and that's when things can get really confusing. The questions about science and faith can be complicated. And at the end of the day, how can we possibly know what's true? Well, the good news is that God gave us brains. And with those brains, God gave us the ability to think for ourselves. And I don't think God made us that way by accident. God created everything, remember? That makes me think God wants us to learn. We should explore the questions we have about things like faith and science. In conversations about things like medicine and health and the human body and creation and the environment and psychology, there's room for science and faith to work together. In fact, as we learn about science, it can grow our faith. That's what's so cool about science and faith. The more we learn about both, the more we realize how compatible they actually can be. They can exist and work together to help us understand even more. We can learn about both God and creation in all kinds of places, and the Bible is one of them. People have documented things in the Bible all throughout history to help us learn more about how science can help us grow our faith. The very first ver <laughs> The very first verse in the whole Bible says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. While this verse and the ones that follow don't exactly tell us how God created every little detail, it does tell us that God was there. God is the who behind all that we see in the world. Everything in the world belongs to God. That's where it gets challenging because while faith is asking questions of who or why, science seems to be asking questions of how. And for a lot of people, asking both questions isn't something they really consider doing. That was definitely true of a guy named Charles Darwin. Maybe you've heard his name at school or in your science books. That's because Darwin was a really brilliant biologist in the 1800s who spent a lot of time studying animals and nature. He was really fascinated with the question of how those things came to be. Eventually, he published a book called On the Origin of Species. And in it, he talked a lot about his ideas on how things like animals and nature and people all got here. He'd spent some time in a place called the Galapagos 
How do you say that? Galap. It's like consonant vowel, consonant vowel. G islands, can I just shorten it to G islands? How do you say the Galapagos Islands? I found this on the web for how do you say the Galapagos Islands. Galapagos, Galapagos Islands. That is where Charles Darwin spent a lot of his time. And while he was there, he started to notice the way that animals look different from one island to the other. Through his studies, he came up with a theory called natural selection. That theory supposed that maybe those species of animals changed or evolved over time to better fit in their specific environment. You may be wondering, why am I giving you this mini science lesson at church? Because what Darwin proposed caused a lot of controversy and disagreement. In fact, it still does today. You see, he suggested that animals could not only change or evolve small parts of themselves, Darwin thought that maybe animals could eventually change into other animals. Beyond that, Darwin even suggested that humans might have evolved from other animals that lived before us. And here's why that idea is so controversial. Darwin suggested that human beings came to existence by accident and that we weren't created on purpose or with a purpose by God. Confusing, right? Darwin's idea is a good example of why people struggle so much about how faith and science can work together. Darwin spent a lot of time trying to understand how the things in the world were created, but he never stopped to consider a creator. As we talked about just a few minutes ago, Christians believe that God is that creator. And if that's true, then none of creation happened by accident. It was all designed on purpose and with a purpose by God. In that very first chapter of Genesis, the writer talked about all of the things God created, light and water and land and plants and animals. It really is amazing when you stop and think about it. But just when you think it's all said and done, things got a little more specific with God's last and most important creation. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Human beings were created to reflect God's image. That's literally why humans were created. We were made to be like God. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And more than that, God made us as good. I know because of what God saw when it was all done. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. Here, we don't see human beings showing up by chance or accident. Instead, we see that they were made by God as good. God created you on purpose, with a purpose, and that is an important piece of this puzzle. It's the who and the why in the story. And those are two questions that we have to ask in this conversation. Think back to our guy, Darwin. As a scientist, he wanted to understand how things were made, which is a really great question. Studying the how is what gives us incredible understanding about the way things work and the amazing advancements that help us in areas like medicine and space and psychology and more. But if we wanna see how science and faith work together, we can't stop there. We have to ask more than just how. We have have to ask why. Because science and faith can work together to show us more about God. It's kind of like gravity. How does gravity work? Well, through an invisible force that pulls objects toward each other. Hold on a second. It's kind of like this egg. If I let go of it, don't get nervous. Will it float into the air? <laughs> I'm gonna need to clean that up just. All right, none of us are surprised. I dropped the egg and it was pulled down and created the mess on the table. Uh, how? Well, by the pull of Earth's gravitational force. But what about the why? Why does gravity exist? Well, to put it simply, we have gravity so that objects and people like me and you don't float off into the universe. <laughs> gravity keeps us planted on the ground. And that why behind gravity shows us that there's a plan and a purpose behind it all. Like gravity, there's a why behind our existence. And it's an important piece of the puzzle. From the beginning, we were different from the rest of God's creation. We were made in God's own image, 
on purpose. God breathed life into us in a way that didn't happen with the rest of the things God created. You're different, I'm different, because we were created with a purpose. And what's the purpose? To know God, to love God, and to reflect God's image to the world, and to experience God's best for your life. That purpose is what makes you different from the rest of God's creation. And it's something that science without God can't tell you because science and faith can work together to show us more about God. Together, they show us the bigger picture. So what do we do with all this stuff? Do we throw out Darwin and others like him completely? Do we ignore what's been documented in the Bible for us about the way we're created because it doesn't make sense scientifically? I don't think we have to do either of those things. When we're faced with questions about science and faith, let's start asking better questions. First, ask how. Approach scientists like Darwin and their discoveries the same way we do with all things in science. We can learn about who they were and study what they discovered and ask questions about it along the way. We shouldn't be afraid to learn more about the how when it comes to things we see and experience in this world. And we shouldn't be afraid to consider how science helps us understand what God says to be true. Next, ask why? In order to make room for both faith and science, we can't forget what God says is the bigger picture. We can't forget about the reason why we were created. So as you discover more about God's creation and the world around you, it's important to consider why those things were made and how they work in God's bigger plans and purpose for us. Then consider the way how and why work together. Remember, science and faith don't have to be separated. In fact, learning about the two things together can actually help us grow in so many ways. In order to do that, we have to ask both questions, how and why. We have to consider how those two things work together. When you're learning about the human body, consider how it works and why it was designed to work that way. When you're learning about space, consider how the planets work and why they're positioned the way they are. When you're learning about the mind, consider how it functions and why God made it to work that way. As you discover more about science, look for what it shows you about faith too. This is also a great time to explore the way science and faith can work together as a group. And as always, your group leader is there to listen and support you as you navigate the ins and outs of both science and faith. Science and faith can work together to show us more about God. There's more to it all than just the science of how it happened. There's the God who made it and its purpose. And when we discover more about both the why and the how, we can discover more about who God is too. 